What's the role of the cleric in the party? That's the question that we're going to ask and explore in this vlog. Because I feel like out of the different and various character classes in D&D, there are not only numerous ways to, to play them, but there are certain expectations put on those character classes by the other party members. And this kind of makes sense from the perspective of Dungeons and Dragons, your party is as like a secret agent troubleshooter commando team. Everyone is working together and everyone is working to bring their unique attributes and, and skills and role to the table, which is what allows you through challenge rating in theory to take on certain monsters that individually would just stomp you. But working as a team, heroes, adventurers, you can overcome that. So this leads to certain expectations like, well, the rogue should be detecting traps. The bard should get us a better rate at the end to save gold. And the mage is doing that magic type, type thing. I feel like, and I notice with clerics, healing is vital. Now, absolutely, calling down the power of the gods to, to heal you and replenish hit points. Uh, in the current edition of D&D, there are many, many ways to quickly recover or get a second wind. Hit point management is always been, has always been important, but it's a lot more forgiving, say, compared to even D&D 3.5, uh, certainly compared to D&D Redbox or AD&D. That trend kind of started in fourth. So from that perspective, though, clerics have always been responsible for healing. That's their primary role from the experience of the players. Yes, they can turn undead. Yes, they can wear heavy armor and with certain divine buffs fight pretty effectively. Yes, they can cast bless, aid, other types of spells to boost the party numbers. You know, look, a simple plus one here, plus one there, universal plus one saving throw for luck. That can potentially be a game changer. But many players tend to focus on just the heals. Barbarian goes out, gets hit, is down. Cleric's turn. Heal me. Barbarian's back up, hits a monster. Monster hits them. Barbarian's down again. Cleric, heal me. That can be a little bit stressful from the perspective of a cleric player. And, and I can see that and I have seen that where uh, the agency of a character, right? You play your character in the game. That's your avatar on the table. That represents you. You've got some amazing ideas. But often in combat... Uh, the player has a diversity of spells that they can use and some really amazing synergies and plans. But just how combat is based, they're like, I got to keep the party up. I got to heal. I got to heal. I got to heal. That that could lead to um, a little bit of frustration. And I'm not certainly not saying that in every game. And certainly as you level up, once you hit like around level eight or nine, other heals start to open up. Uh, laying on hands, Monk abilities, Paladin abilities, um, magic items, other heals. You know, certainly you could hire an NPC cleric. We had like a whole uh, making our way through the keep on the borderlands. We had a whole like chorus of of NPC acolyte clerics, lower level clerics that we were just making donations to um, the church back at the keep, just to sit there and like blast us with with healing spells. So the, it does become a little bit easier as the party level ups. But within that, what are some of the things that we can do to mitigate the ability, the need to constantly heal? It's your turn as a cleric. It doesn't matter what initiative order I'm in. I'm just going to heal people. Um, I was recently playing a druid, and I, I found keeping track of the spells that I was burning off, they were cure light wounds. They were heals. They were healing word. That, that was like 90%. Um, that and Entangle and then later fl Flaming Sphere. I mean, we only really made it to uh, the lower levels of playing. But from that perspective, even as a secondary healer, that's what I was occupied with most of my time. When I would have liked to use in combat some shape-shifting, um, some of the other nature-type spells and attacks from that perspective. So what can we do? Well, as soon as it's possible. I say as soon as it's possible because, again, the campaign depends on many things, other alternate ways to heal. The classic old school healing pot, have a few of those. Um, as 
a secondary character comes online, if it's a druid, if it's a monk, if it's a paladin with some heals, have them assist with the healing duty. Although that could be a little bit challenging because being primary damage dealers, that's where they want to be burning their initiative and, and not on healing. And then second with the cleric, looking for um, positioning. Where can you be to heal most effectively? So maybe you don't have to heal every other turn. Maybe when you see someone starting to dip down, you can blast them with a heal, but then in the next initiative turn order, that will free you up to do something. But ultimately, with how the game is designed, it's hard, it's challenging at the lower levels to get around that. And the only thing I can say from the Dungeon Master's perspective of playing a cleric is work with the party, have the party work with the cleric to try to free up um, some of that management. That will only make my job as the dungeon master tactically with the monsters a lot more challenging because now the cleric, I have to account for that every time the cleric goes by initiative, they're going to be healing. If that's not the case every time and they can bring in other divine spells or, or just swing that mace for another d20, that, that changes things tactically. That changes my plans tactically. So it's in the best interest of the party. It's in the best interest of the party to work and ask the question and see if there's a possibility. How can you free up the cleric beyond just heals?